much. I think we have seen from Torino a very, very consistent, coherent approach. I remind you, Torino is 130 square kilometers and it is about 1 million people. Now we move on to another uh, game city that is changing the game is Utrecht in the Netherlands. We have two speakers. I remind you it has 100 square kilometers and 320,000 people. Uh, but it, their challenge is a very, very fast growing city. And so th this is what we'll he hear from them, how they are addressing this serious challenge with a triple helix, you will hear more, with the innovative ways of mobility and sustainability. Well, their key word, which I'm very curious to, to understand, is they promote an open society. So let's hear what an open society is. Okay. Thanks very much for these words, for these kind words as well. First of all, uh, let me thank uh, the organization for inviting us. Uh, we're very happy to tell you something about Utrecht, and we're also very happy to be in this lovely venue. I've been to more congresses before, but this is by far the nicest venue I've ever been. I do this presentation. I'm myself, I'm Bas Akkers. I work for the mun municipality of Utrecht at the economic department, and I do this presentation together with my colleague, Thank you, Bas. <laughs> I'm Erlijn uh, Mulder. I'm a strateg strategist for the municipality of Utrecht, and I helped uh, formulate the uh, new city council, their strategy for the upcoming four years, and it's all based on health. Okay. Um, we are going to tell you something about uh, the concept of healthy urban living, uh, which is a couple of years our leading principle uh, in the municipality. But um, first of all, I can imagine that not all of you know Utrecht very well. Maybe some of you haven't have even been in Utrecht. So we uh, have some facts for you to show uh, you something about Utrecht. Uh, Albert Pelicula, per favor. <laughs>
that was Utrecht last year, but it's almost the same. <laughs> Gracias, Albert. And now we continue with our presentation. Uh, I'm going to tell you something about the why. Why we chose, uh, we cho we've chosen for healthy urban living. Get to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, why did we choose for healthy urban living? First of all, because we've got a very um, solid economic basis for healthy, uh, for, for for health actually. We've got uh, on our science park several uh, leading institutes uh, on the area of health. Um, I, I can call, uh, I can name them, but probably you won't know them because they're quite Dutch. But um, I have to mention uh, the Hubrecht Institute for stem for the stem cell research, internationally leading uh, on the Utrecht Science Park. There are also lots of universities. Uh, one thing to mention is also we recently opened the center of One Health, which means there's only one health. In uh, Utrecht we've got uh, medicine studies and we've got the only city in the Netherlands with veterinary medicine studies. And these together form a One Health cluster. And why is One Health imp uh, uh, important? Well, I I'll mention the mad cow disease, uh, the aviation influenza and uh, the Zika virus in Brazil uh, recently. Uh, in, in our region, we also host several um, international companies like uh, Danone Research Center, GlaxoSmithKline, Telstar, Cipla, and Genma. Uh, approximately 20 to 25% of the employment can be found in health. And there are also lots of opportunities. Uh, we are Dutch, so we want to make money as well. There are also uh, opportunities to enhance the economic basis and even export it. For instance, at this moment, two um, companies from Utrecht are, are helping the city of Beijing uh, to implement their master cycling plan. Uh, the assignment is also a part of the why uh, we choose for healthy urban living is the massive growth uh, in, in Utrecht, uh, as, as we've seen in the film as well. We grow from 330 until 400,000 uh, inhabitants, and uh, we don't want to do that in our surrounding because our surrounding is quite green. We want to keep it green, so we want to do it by infill, and the only way you can do that uh, is by, according to us, healthy urban living. So um, then you have the why that it's uh, on an economic basis. But uh, a few years ago, um, we said to each other, the basis of Utrecht is already very healthy. 60% of the uh, inhabitants are really healthy, exercise regularly, and they are highly educated. That is not really average in the Netherlands. I mean, 60% of our people are, uh, have a master's or a bachelor's degree and uh, have a healthy um, uh, way of living already. Uh, but if, when you grow by infill, you have to ask yourself different questions. So um, as we were growing this fast, and as society is changing also very fast, uh, we asked ourselves, how can we maintain uh, and even improve our health and the quality of life in Utrecht? Um, a few years ago, when the new political coalition started, uh, that was one of the main assignments. How can we grow in a balanced way, and how can we do that in a healthy way? Um, the other one was actually... Um, also, it was more a how part. We wanted to do it together with a city. We wanted to build partnerships because society is changing and isn't, isn't working anymore in a systemic way. It's working by networks and uh, more agile and adaptive. And we, as an organization, had to change. We realized that it requires different skills from our employees. Um, the why of our organization is, does it contribute to the health of our city and its inhabitants? And then it doesn't matter if you work at the education department, 
at the health department, the cultural department, it all comes down to one question. Does this contribute to the health of the city and her inhabitants? And merely that is the basis of everything that we do right now. Right now. And as our former colleagues from Barcelona told us already, uh, the political support is, is uh, a key factor to success that. So it started with the political support and after that, the, the organization adopted it quite quickly because it all fell into place. We have to think about the future of Utrecht and we want to think it in a healthy way. What is a healthy city in the future? We ask ourselves that what are the, uh, uh, the, the parts that make a city whole? It's about my colleague from uh, uh, Petruccia, uh, Mr. Hansel, already told us, it's about playful, a playful city. It has to be light and it has to stimulate to move. It has to be sustainable and even circular because energy uh, uh, is running out and we have to make smart solutions to, in order to have the right energy resources. It's about technology because uh, society is changing really fast with the help of technology. But do we also have places to meet each other, to have encounters, um, to respect each other? I mean, there are so many nationalities in our city. Um, it's, all, it's also about respect. Um, well, you've already seen we have 245 bike, uh, kilometers of bike lanes, so it has to be about the bike as well. But if you have all those bikes in the city, where can you walk? So those were the, 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 the words and the definitions we think you need to build a, uh, a healthy city for the future. And it's all about collaboration, co-creation, crossovers. So it's not sectoral, but it's all about crossovers and about innovation. Buzz. Okay, we're, going to, we're going to do this presentation um, uh, about some topics. Of course, healthy urban living has got to do with everything. Uh, we, we love things. We could have talked about our waste energy. Uh, uh, recycling, we could have talked about our, our green sc uh, schools uh, as well, but we chose a, a couple of them in which we uh, think we, we, uh, we, we can, uh, you can learn from it. First, uh, in the field of economy. Second, we're going to say something about sustainability. The third will be accessibility and clean transport. Healthy people, healthy neighborhood, That's for, especially for, for politics, uh, very, very important, of course. Uh, then I'm going to tell uh, you something about organization, participation, and social inclusivity. And uh, at the end, that's a proof of the pudding, uh, we've got um, a, a huge venue close to the center of Utrecht. Uh, it's called the Jaarbeurs. And they, they, it's, it's a huge area, but nowadays it's an exhibition uh, venue. But nowadays it's not uh, that popular anymore to go to... Um, to, to that kind of venues because uh, because of the internet. So they uh, said to, to us, to the city, half of uh, this area, uh, we, we give it back to you. So that w that's for us uh, a gift because what then we can show we have to, uh, uh, through infill, we have to ac accommodate the growth of our population. So that's a gift so we can prove uh, ourselves with uh, the concept of heavy urban living, create uh, a neighborhood for the future. Um, organization and participation and social inclusive inclusivity is not something you get easily done. This is really a mind shift. Um, uh, we build partnerships with usual suspects, of course, but also with new in initiators, with new ways of conversation. We train our employees to really talk differently with our people in the city uh, because it requires an, a new way of uh, finding solutions. We build networks uh, in the region, uh, in the city, and in the neighborhoods. And we experiment with new dem democracy, because if you want to use the ideas and the innovations of the city, you have to find a way to extract them out of the city. So um, we organize town meetings and city talks, and they're all uh, organized about collecting ideas 
that make this, the city smarter and healthier. Um, so we're not going to talk about how uh, things are um, uh, not going well, but how we can improve uh, the city and the neighborhoods. And for instance, we had this city talk about uh, uh, the, bicycle, uh, the bicycle in the city, and one of the members said, there are so many useless traffic lights, and they cause these traffic jams. Can't we just uh, 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 put them um, away? And uh, we collected uh, through social media uh, spots that, uh, that were useless, and we collected 500 traffic lights that were actually useless in the city. So they're shut down right now, and they're making the bicycle paths more swiftly and fluently uh, to go through the city. That's just one example. Um, we have Urban Future Studios, with which we work with uh, startups and students. Uh, we also have uh, co we, uh, collaborations between the university and the art academy, because um, when you want to uh, look at smart solutions in the city, it's about behavior, it's about playing, because people don't want to have instructions, they want to learn by doing. So um, we use the Art Academy to make the city more playful and uh, uh, invite people to, to move uh, uh, more and better. Um, we have in our new uh, city office uh, actually a stair, a stairway, and there were some employees who found it very boring. It was all white. And uh, they uh, did a crowdfunding action between, uh, under the employees, and we invited the city poet to write a poem from the first floor to the 21st floor. And so now you can read the poem from upside down and from, from uh, down to up and from up to down uh, every, uh, every floor. And so it makes sense both ways. It makes sense both ways. It's beautiful. <laughs> So, I, and it works because now I use the stair, and perhaps not from one to 20, to, from one to 21, but from 11 to 21, or from one to five or eight. And then every time you read those beautiful lines, you think, oh gosh. <laughs> so it's, it's about stimulating, inviting, co-creation, and it's always a bit messy. I mean, uh, working in networks, uh, non-hierarchical, -hierarch is that a word in English? Hierarchical. Hierarchical. Uh, that is always a bit messy. It's not linear. It goes with hiccups and collisions. But it's also, uh, we, have, uh, we don't do large goals. We do it by scrums. So every time we get an improvement, we say, OK, we've achieved this. And how, can we how can we improve it? And who do we need it with? Pass. Okay. <coughs> My favorite topic, uh, economics. Um, the region of Utrecht was um, uh, um, elected twice as the most competitive region uh, in Europe. Uh, next autumn there will be uh, the next election, the next, uh, and we're, we hope, of course, to do it as well as we did. Uh, what do we do with healthy urban living in the field of uh, economics? Of course, acquisition. Uh, when we uh, try to attract uh, companies, foreign companies, we wanted to attract companies in the field of, of smart, uh, green, and health. Uh, recently, uh, we attracted uh, the Danone Research Center. Uh, we also attracted Telstar from, um, from America and CIPLA from, um, from India. Um, another uh, major topic uh, on, on the Utrecht Science Park is, is life sciences. We're quite good at life sciences, so we try to attract uh, life sciences companies as well from, from, um, from all over the world uh, to Utrecht. Uh, another uh, uh, important issue is, is, the, is the startups, the startup community. Um, startups, as we all know, try to be disruptive, and because our uh, unbelievable growth of the city. We need um, uh, innovation, we need this disruptive um, solutions. So uh, fortunately, we've got a, a very young population, and, and, and nowadays, uh, when I was a student, uh, some of us were thinking about being an entrepreneur, but nowadays, uh, it seems that everyone uh, who's a student wants to be an entrepreneur. So fortunately, we've got a lot of startups in, um, in the municipality, in the region of Utrecht, 
approxim approximately 400 startups, and um, they they work uh, uh, occasionally on their own. But we've we've got also five um, incubators where they are being trained and being an entrepreneur with their with their business model. Uh, recently, we decided to. Um, to, f to form Startup Utrecht. I'm also part of uh, Startup Utrecht, uh, where all the incubators work together on the topics where we, uh, can, work, we, we can better work together. Of course, uh, we've got startups of incubators with all kind of um, different startups. So we've got one for, for gaming, for, for serious gaming. Uh, uh, we've got uh, one uh, f from the universities called uh, Utrecht Inc., which was elected uh, the sixth, sixth best uh, university incubator in Europe recently. Um, but, but we try to work together. Uh, on, um, <coughs> on the Utrecht Science Park, there's also the iLab. It's an open source lab uh, laboratory uh, where uh, SME can uh, use the laboratory uh, together with students, it's, well, it's, it's, it's again small costs, but it's it's um, it's, it's opened uh, a year now. It's already quite successful. A lot of, of companies go there to experiment and and try to improve their product. Um, we've got also, uh, as our moderator already mentioned, the Economic Board Utrecht. That's our triple helix uh, partnership between local governments, um, companies, and our knowledge uh, institutions. And uh, to, they work until they started in 2013, and they um, uh, collected 200 uh, millions on investments and hundreds of, of jobs recently. And what do they do? They uh, say, we've got so uh, societal challenges. Uh, um, uh, with the help of the, um, of the universities, of the knowledge institutions, we try to make business models from it uh, in which the, the companies uh, can, uh, can make business, can, can earn money. So that, that's a proof. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you something uh, with which might explain uh, the working of the economic board a little bit better. It's called, uh, we call it null optimator voting. That's um, uh, energy low uh, dwellings. Um, uh, particularly the dwellings in the uh, 60s and 70s of the last century, they, they leak a lot of energy. So we try to uh, renovate them and make them uh, at very low or even uh, no energy costs um, by, by isolation, by solar energy on the roof, uh, via all means. But uh, it'll cost you around 70,000 uh, euros to do that w when, you, um, uh, when you change one, uh, renovate one dwelling. But if you do it together with the whole region, then the, the cost will, uh, low, low, uh, will lower until 40,000 uh, euros. And then you've got a business case. So uh, because of the, the, the future costs of energy are approximately 40,000 euros. So the, those 40,000 euros against each other, zero sum game, so uh, then uh, it's possible uh, to to make uh, zero uh, cost uh, energy dwelling. So that that's the task of the the Economic Board Utrecht, to to find partnerships with with different cities in the region, uh, different municipalities uh, to create uh, that business case. Okay, uh, I'll I'll skip uh, the number. What I wanted to tell you about economics, of course, we do a lot more in, in, in the field of economics, but uh, creating partnerships, uh, uh, take care of encounters, so uh, crossovers will occur. Okay, this uh, topic uh, is uh, uh, my colleague from Hamburg will tell you more about it, so I won't um, talk uh, very long about it. Uh, we've got one very nice startup. It's called Lombaxnet. Uh, uh, you'll see a picture uh, in, in a couple of seconds. But uh, he invented, um, he didn't invent smart grids, but he invented together with General Electric and, and Nissan the vehicle to grid, 
which is uh, Lombok is a, a neighborhood uh, in the s close to the center of Utrecht. There's solar charging. Uh, the, uh, the, en the electricity flow, uh, flows to the car. But what's new about this is that the, the car uh, can give the energy back to the houses as well. So uh, the, the car actually uh, is, is uh, used as, as, a, as, a, as a battery. So people, uh, lots of times cars, of course, are not used. So the car is full of electricity, not used, give back uh, electricity to, to the houses. People can watch television. People can watch European Championship without the Netherlands, by the way. Um, well, I, uh, I'll, I'll skip uh, the, the next. Uh, Snapcar is also quite interesting. That's, uh, that's also a startup from Utrecht. It's about sharing cars. As, as I already mentioned, a lot of cars are not used very often. So we, um, uh, so that, that, that's a, a startup uh, to, to help people using cars of, of other uh, people. And because of that, Utrecht is the second city with the largest uh, uh, shared car, uh, largest number of share, shared cars. Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Uh, Albert <laughs> Pilikula, por favor. De eerste stap die wij daarin maken is dus in dit geval door gebruik te maken van de meetapparatuur die we bij jullie gaan uitrollen. Vanuit de verdeelstations gaat de stroom uiteindelijk bij jou en mij. Ja, uh, ik krijg ook gewoon een schemaatje erbij als ik dat uh, spul in huis krijg. Er zijn steeds meer bewoners en uh, collectieven uit de regio's gaan energie. Well, I think this is not working. Perhaps we can skip this one and yeah, move it. over to yeah. the rest. It's well, it's a very. Perhaps we can uh, send it to you digitally. It's a very easy way of uh, understanding how it works with uh, smart grid uh, uh, concepts. Energie zelf opwekken en uh, de energiecentrales zijn nu gericht op centrales die naar huizen leveren en niet andersom. Dus dat gaat er compleet op zijn kop, want decentrale energie moet er op ieder punt ingeknoopt worden. Eh, honderden plekken in een wijk of in een stad. Ja, we hebben hier uh, een flink aantal uh, zonnepanelen neergezet op dit dak, maar ook op het dak van een aantal scholen in de buurt. En die hebben we rechtstreeks gekoppeld met uh, energieafname, onder andere een laadpunt. Dit kantoor, een woning en een school. En we proberen dat zo goed mogelijk te balanceren, dus gebruiken als de zon schijnt. Dus de auto wordt nu opgeladen op het moment dat de zon produceert. En dat willen we op steeds meer plekken in deze wijk realiseren. Ja, het Smart Grid project, Smart Grid Rendement voor Iedereen, is inderdaad een heel vernieuwend en groot project. Wij zijn vanuit de UC, Utrecht Sustainability Institute, vanaf het begin aangehaakt als partij die de kennisoverdracht organiseert binnen het project. Want het is jammer als al die kennis die je opzet op, op en die concepten die je ontwikkelt in nieuwe diensten, als die in hoofden en in rapporten blijft, blijft zitten. Je moet één, zorgen dat er goede connecties zijn tussen ons netwerk en het internationale netwerk. Je moet ervoor zorgen dat we opslag krijgen, opslag organiseren, om die stroom op het moment dat je ze niet gebruikt toch te kunnen opslaan, bijvoorbeeld in accu's van auto's. En je moet er ook voor zorgen dat de mensen die die stroom opwekken, dat zij die stroom zoveel mogelijk gebruiken op het moment dat die stroom wordt opgewekt. Nou ja, nu kan het net dat gewoon niet aan massale energieopwek of massaal elektrische auto's gebruik. Dus dan krijgen we blackouts. We richten ons specifiek op laadpalen die kunnen laden op basis van zonne-energie. En dan ook real-time, dus op het moment dat de zon schijnt gaat er extra veel stroom naar de auto toe. En daarmee kunnen we twee pieken in het net oplossen. Ten eerste de zonnepiek, als de zon veel energie geeft. En ten tweede het laden van auto's, want er komen steeds meer elektrische auto's in de wijk, waaronder deze. 
En die gebruiken steeds meer stroom. En als dat op een gegeven moment te veel wordt, dan is het net daar niet meer voor geschikt. En op deze manier kunnen we meer auto's laden en meer zonne-energie kwijt. En op beide punten meer rendement maken. Uh, wat ik zelf het mooiste vind is dat je uh, bijvoorbeeld in de wijk Lombok, waar we nu uh, zelf zijn, probeert om zoveel mogelijk in de regio opgewekte energie direct lokaal te gebruiken. Zodat je helemaal straks geen net meer nodig hebt, maar het slim weet in te zetten voor energie die je toch verbruikt in de wijk. Zo. So. So thank you very much. We were almost without, left without, without words. I mean, it was so impressive. So let's thank Erlene Mulder and Bas Ackers for this. Uh, <laughs> so it's not only Johann Sebastian Bach who can make uh, two-part inventions. It's also you that uh, have given us uh, this uh, really very, very exciting presentation. I'm quite amazed because it is a major problem that of uh, um, all over of getting uh, uh, grids uh, and working without wasting this, the energy that is produced. And this is such a beautiful this, idea. And this was just a smart inhabitant of mm. our neighborhood. Yeah, 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 and yeah, he invented it literally on yeah, his attic. Yeah, yeah, and he came to us and he said, I've got a good idea. Do you want to help, her, yeah. help me? And now he, he signed a big contract in Paris at the Climate Convention. And last week he was in the, uh, in the parliament of, uh, of the Netherlands uh, giving answers to... Uh, to the members of the yeah, parliament. Yeah, very, very impressive.